Hey guys, um, I hope everything is going well with the class. Uh, I just wanted to give you a brief video about uh, your paper format for the next three modules. Um, when we get to your final paper, which is way in the future from today, uh, I will talk a little bit more about how we'll expand on that. But for the first three papers in this class, um, they're going to be smaller literary analysis. So I want to start first just with the idea of a lit analysis. Uh, some of you might have written on literature before. Some of you might not have at all, but you all have taken college composition, um, either English 111 and 112 or something from another institution. So you all have been introduced to, of course, the writing process and argumentative writing. So lit analysis, it is not much different from what you have previously done in argumentative patterns. Uh, the difference is, though, that your argument is going to be about the literature and uh, your main support is going to be the text itself. So let me just start first with the general requirements of the next three papers that you have. Um, we write one of these for each module. Um, so we'll just focus on the current one that we're working on, the Gilded Age model. Um, you are free to choose any of the stories that we read during this um, module. Or if you didn't like any of the ones that we have read, uh, you are free to choose um, any in that textbook um, during the Gilded Age period, so any from that first anthology. Um, there is no strong, I guess I should say, the benefit of choosing one that we have already read is, of course, you've read it, you've discussed it, you probably have already formed a viewpoint about it, and um, you have received some feedback from me in your discussions um, if you were on the right track or if maybe I thought that you need to have a little bit more support to prove that claim that you made. Um, but again, you are still free to revisit any of the short stories in the textbook. Um, these papers, um, I do keep them two to three pages, so they are smaller analysis. Um, and for these ones, you do just need to use the text itself. You are welcome to use outside sources, um, but since we have not yet discussed how to find literary critics and how to um, use literary criticism in your papers, um, I do try to encourage people just to stay with the text itself. However, true to any class, if you're looking at outside sources, whether you're directly quoting them, paraphrasing them, summarizing them, you have to give credit to them in your paper. All right, so that's just the brief background on getting started with these. The next step is what exactly a literary criticism is. Um, literary criticism, it is an argument about the short story or poem. We haven't read any plays in this section, so short story or poem. Um, it is you defending your point of view on the story itself. So there's several ways that you can take that. Um, you can look at, as we've done in the discussions, I've always asked you so far what you think the theme is, um, how you arrived at that idea. Um, so you can always look at the theme. Um, but you can also look at other, other literary elements. So things like um, the characters, the setting, the plot itself, the writing style of the author. You have the freedom to consider um, really anything about the short story or poem that has interest you. The next step then is to develop your thesis based on your opinion or your analysis of that particular writing. So let's say, for instance, that you were going to argue um, one of the themes of Twain's short story that we read during the first week. Um, your next step would be then to prove that theme using the text itself. So what lit cri literary criticism or literary analysis really depends upon is your interpretation of the short story and using that short story as evidence in your writing. So what I expect from you in the paper is, of course, to have a lot of quotes, a lot of summaries from the short story or from the poem. So it's going to be your direct evidence. You're going to have to use it. Um, in addition to that, when it comes to planning your paper, um, it's important that you have an organized um, pattern to your writing. Um, many times people just use the same argumentative patterns that they may have used in previous writing courses. So um, the thesis stating the point of view and then each body paragraph introducing a reason. Um, other people just chronologically follow the short story, which I think oftentimes we do anyways, just um, because it makes sense when you're retelling a story. Um, so that's another way to consider during your planning. Um, what's important though is that you offer not just an argument, but an analysis to the story by using the story as the support. So again, um, brief recap, um, choose your story, choose um, what literary element you want to focus on, um, and then of course choose 
um, how you intend or plan how you intend to prove that thesis in your paper. Um, just a side note when it comes to drafting, it's really important that you avoid that first person that I think, I feel, I believe. Those are just filler phrases. They're not needed in really any writing that you do. So um, if you find yourself that you're in that habit of doing that, I think, I feel, um, just during your, I guess, probably your revising stages, really look for those first persons and get rid of that redundancy. Um, if you have any questions, I will post more um, in the module. I just wanted to put this video up so you can start planning um, as you begin to think about what story or poem would interest you. Um, but what I'll post in the module um, is just a summary of the paper requirements and then the due dates for you as well. Um, so if you have any questions, just be sure that you reach out to me at any time.